Yes, sir. It's uh, coming. It's past time. Good morning, church. Aren't you glad to be in the Lord's house this morning? Say amen. Amen. Let's turn our minds and hearts towards our Heavenly Father. If you'd stand with us. And he rolls up the sleeve he ain't just putting on the ritz our, our god, god is an awesome god there was thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist our, our god, god is an awesome god. god and the lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of eden it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood his return is very soon and so you better be believing that our god is an awesome god our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And with the sky of the starless and the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke in darkness and created the light our, our god is an awesome god judgment and wrath he poured out on sodom the mercy and grace he gave us at the cross i hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our god is an awesome god our god, god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our god is an awesome god him church you may be seated share the gospel with them. And so we're so glad to have you here this morning. Uh, we are making available live stream in the in the Life Center. If it's too crowded in here for you, uh, we have that. And we also have people online. And so we've got three venues going. And so wherever you feel comfortable uh, worshiping, that's where we want you to be. Uh, whether it's in here, too crowded in here for you, you can walk across and be in the Life Center and worship there or online and so we're just so glad to have you here this morning we just want to remind you we exist to be passionate about life change why we want to help anybody and everybody do one thing grow in their relationship with the lord jesus christ and so we're just so glad to have you here this morning uh we're just going to go to the lord in prayer and uh brother sam and the band are going to keep leading us in worship so let's pray dear Heavenly father we just do come to you this morning we truly are grateful that we can just enter into your house. Lord, we are grateful for the freedom for the freedom we have this morning. Nobody put a gun to our heads before we came here. We didn't have to go through a security checkpoint. We freely 
came together, and we thank you for that, Lord. But, Lord, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in many parts of the world. They don't have this freedom. May you be with them today, and may you just bless them and move mightily in their services, Lord, and may many be saved. But, Lord, we welcome you here, too, and we pray that the Holy Spirit would have the freedom to work here today. Lord, we all have different things going on in our lives. We're at different points spiritually. But we come to you, Lord, and we acknowledge that you are in control. And we just ask that you would speak to us this morning. Through music and Sam and the band, just use their gifts that you've given them to usher us into a time of worship of you, Lord. May we glorify your name. May we praise your name, the name above all names. And so, Lord, I just pray for your hand to be upon this service. Lord, may we just not go through the motions this morning. But may you be here to meet with us. And Lord, I, I welcome your spirit. And Lord, may we come with open hands and open hearts to where we want to hear from you. Because Lord, we're just needy people. We just lack so much, but we need you, Lord. And you're the all-sufficient one. And so, Lord, we just pray you would draw people to yourself. We pray for those that are worshiping online, that you would meet with them. We pray for those in, in the Life Center, you would meet with them. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would fall down on us. And just change lives, Lord. May we leave here never the same because we've taken steps closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe is laid. It sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art.
y'all guys people said amen amen, amen. all righty any kids in here for children's church okay all right all right just do want to remind you you can um give many ways you can give in the house and there's a box here and box in the back and you can give online you can drop it off uh, in the office, or you can mail it, whatever you need. Um, and so again, we encourage you, but thank you for your faithfulness to give throughout all this Corona apocalypse, and we thank you for being faithful. Um, anybody need an outline? Brother Brad has one. If you just raise your hand, he'll get you one uh, as we're going to start a new series uh, today called Kingdom Living. Okay? All righty, well, let's pray, and we're going to dive into God's Word, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you, and we ask that you just speak to us from your Word, Lord. And Lord, I just pray you would cleanse my tongue and help me to say only what you want said. So, Lord, I pray. You would just meet each person at their deepest point of need. And only you know what that is, Lord. But we are grateful that you want to speak into every one of our hearts, whether we're here in an overflow room, online, it does not matter. We are so grateful that you want to speak to us right now. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you, Brother Sam. and band for leading us in worship this morning. Attitude speaks volumes about a person's life. Attitude determines many times our approach in life. Someone has said attitude determines uh, altitude in our life. And to illustrate that one day a little boy went to his grandfather's farm and his grandfather was a stern old-fashioned Baptist and the little boy went out to the barnyard, and he was playing around. He saw the chickens pecking on the ground and running around playing. He said, well, nope, they don't. They ain't got it. Then he went around, looked a little more, and saw a little coat running around, kicking up his heels. And he says, well, the little boy said, I hope he ain't got it. Then he saw a little donkey with a long, furrowed, and sad face. He said, yep, he's got it. Grandfather said, well, son, what does the donkey have that the chickens and the colt don't have? He said, that's easy, granddad. Look at the donkey's long, sad face. He has the same religion you have. Yeah. Yeah. So we're starting a series today, Kingdom Living, and we're going to look at kingdom attitudes. Really can affect our life. And so the goal of this message is for you and I to understand this one major truth. The kingdom attitudes are for all Christ followers to live out. And we're going to be looking at some kingdom attitudes for these next several, two, well, really two months and then we're called, as Christ followers, to live them out. So we're going to be in Matthew 5. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3. Just three verses a day, and we're really going to narrow down on only one verse. It says in verse 1, When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Now let me just stop there. Verse 1 it says he sat down. Back then, any Jewish rabbi, when he taught, he would sat down. 
So Jesus sees this crowd, and he goes up on the mountain so that he can speak to the crowd, and he says his disciples came to him. Now, this word disciples here, he's just not talking about his 12. He's talking about those who had decided to follow him. Now, you know there was a crowd following him many times because they just wanted to see the show. We want to see, uh, you know, uh, a po' boy meal made like that. We want to see you do miracles and healing and many for that. But many had begun to follow him. And so verse 2, he says, Then he began to teach them, saying, What? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Now, the general theme, and this is the Sermon on the Mount, okay? Augustine in the 400s came up with this title, okay? But the theme of this whole sermon that we're going to look at, uh, and it'll take a while to go through, is the kingdom of heaven. And that's even in our text today. Now, what we're going to see is, hey, the Sermon on the Mount is not laws to achieve salvation, but they're actually attitudes and character and conduct for all Christ followers to live out. Now, what's amazing is, you've probably heard the Sermon on the Mount. Even if you don't read the Bible much, you've probably said, well, you, you've heard somebody say, hey, Jesus preached up on a mountain one day. It's probably the best-known part Matthew 5 to 7, the best known part of Jesus' teaching, but the least understood and the least obeyed. And so today we're going to dive into these kingdom attitudes. We're just going to start diving into them. We're not going to look at all eight of them today. You need to understand what Jesus says is going to be opposite to the world. And many times Jesus' te teaching would be his way is up is down. And many times you would think, Jesus, it's got to be this way. And Jesus said, no, it's, it's this way. And so we'll see that through this Sermon on the Mount. The question is, do you know what these kingdom attitudes are? And number two, do you live by them? And you say, hey, I've never heard about them. Well, hopefully you'll stick around with us, either online or in person, and learn what these attitudes are. Because I really believe these are kingdom attitudes. Now, most of the time you hear them referred to as what? You've been in church a while? Beatitudes, okay? So when I say kingdom attitudes, I'm talking about these beatitudes, okay? And so today what we're going to do is we're going to ask five questions. What is this kingdom attitude? So let's dive in. Number one, what does blessed mean? Okay, you see this blessed is what? The poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the humble than me. Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness. What does this word mean? First, we got, what does that word mean? Does, does that mean I get blessed with a lot of money? Financially, I get whatever I want? Uh, no, you need to understand what this word means. And it'll be there on your outline. It means this, favored by God. And it describes a person that God approves. Okay? Now, some translations may translate it happy, but happy is not a great translation because that's based upon too many times we think circumstances. What this word means is blessed, or the person who is poor in spirit is favored by God, or the person that is poor in spirit describes a person that God approves. Now, if you... His audience... At that time, all they had was what? The Old Testament, right? So they would have been familiar with that. What's Psalm 1? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. Psalm 32, same thing. Blessed is the person. And so they would have been, they would have heard that language before. And they would have been, oh, this means someone approved by God, someone favored by God. But you do need to understand we're going to go through these beatitudes. We're going to go through these kingdom attitudes, and each one builds on the next one. It's in logical sequence that God laid these out. It's kind of like a ladder taking a step up. And each one builds on the next one. And that's why you need to understand what they are so that you can live them out. And if you don't get this first one, you can't live the rest one. 
the attitudes out. You've got to get this first one right, or you won't live the rest of them out. Second question, what does poor in spirit mean? Does he, is he talking about people poor that are financially? Or is he talking about people that are poor that don't have much material things? Jesus is not saying, blessed are the poor financially. Poverty and being poor is not a means of salvation, even though you need to understand one of the big false teachings in our country being taught all over the place is liberation theology. <coughs> you say, what's that? That's where Jesus came only to save the poor and the oppressed by society. That's taught all over our country. It's been taught all over our country, all over the place. That's not the gospel. That's false teaching. Jesus is not talking about poor in spirit. It does not mean, hey, uh, those people that have a low self-esteem and, 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 and put themselves down all the time. No, Jesus didn't die for junk. Jesus died for all people. Why? Because all of us and everybody has been created in the image of God. So what is this phrase, poor in spirit, what does it mean? Well, this is a definition I want to work from today, and this is what I think it means. We must admit our spiritual bankruptcy and poverty before God and our need to be totally dependent on God. We admit that we're spiritually poor, we're spiritually bankrupt in of ourselves, and our need is to be totally dependent on God. Now, what would the opposite of that be? Someone who is proud and haughty in their spirit and think they're all that in a bag of chips. So you've got to have humility and spiritual poverty to be a Christ follower. You've got to recognize, I'm not God. See, that's the problem with Adam and Eve. Remember in the beginning? God says, you can have everything in the garden, but do not eat of this tree. And what did Satan come and say to them? And the serpent says, oh. He didn't say this, is, but this is what he meant. God lied to you. If you eat of that tree, you will become God. You'll be able to make all the decisions in your life. You will be in control. See, that's the problem. We all want control. We all think we can become like God, but we can't. So let me give you an illustration uh, that Jesus gives, I believe, of someone who is poor in spirit. If you have your Bible open, you can flip over to Luke 18, 11 through 14, or you can listen to me read this because it's not on the screen. But Luke 18, 9 through 14, let me read it to you. Because Jesus tells a parable in Luke 18. He, he says the parable to those who trusted in themselves, who are righteous and look down on everyone else. So he says, two people met in the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, who would have been a religious leader, and then one, a tax collector, who would have been an IRS guy, who would have been the scum of the earth. He would have, nobody wanted to hang around him. And then he says, the Pharisee was standing <coughs> and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, God. I give a tenth of everything I get. But verse 13 says, But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes up to heaven, but kept striking his chest and said, What God have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus says this, I tell you, the one who went down to his house justified rather than the other, because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He's saying, man, that tax collector admitted his spiritual bankruptcy and his poverty. The Pharisee, the religious man, 
he thought, man, I've got a lock on the kingdom of heaven. I can do whatever I want to because I'm such a religious guy. I fast twice a week. I do all this. I get lots of money. I'm going to get there on my own. You need to understand it costs to follow Jesus, folks. But it costs more not to follow Jesus. Say, so how do I become a follower of Jesus? Let me tell you. The Bible says that you're only declared righteous by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Because you cannot save yourself. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself, referring to Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree, having did what? Died to sins, so that we might live for righteousness. See, we all inherited that sin nature because Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree. And because we're all sinners, we need someone to pay for our sin debt. Praise God, Jesus did on the tree. He went on Calvary. He died for our sins. He was then buried in the tomb, but he rose on the third day to defeat death, hell, and the grave so that we might be able to have forgiveness sins and eternal life. And we can have that if we'll call on the name of Jesus and turn and follow him. And then the great thing is, is then you are grafted into the forever family tree of God. It's permanent. But you've got to admit that you're poor in spirit. You can't get there on your own. Your religiosity, your works, your good deeds, your being moral, it ain't going to get there. The hymn writer Rock of Ages said this, one of the verses says, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked I come to thee for dress, helpless to look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Die. Only through Christ that we can have cleansing and his forgiveness and his righteousness so that we can have eternal life. And it only comes when we admit our spiritual bankruptcy and poverty. See, the problem with the rich young ruler, he didn't want to give up all his stuff and follow Jesus. He didn't want to cry uncle and admit he needed to follow Jesus. He did not want to admit that he could have a permanent relationship with God. He didn't want to give up that stuff. The only way to have a relationship with Jesus is to be poor in spirit. Poor in spirit, you've got to admit, I'm spiritually bankrupt in and of myself. I, I have spiritual poverty. And no government program will save you from that. <laughs> but only Jesus. Third question, let's move on. How do we live out these kingdom attitudes? How do we live these out? Let me read to you 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Paul says, Do you not know that your body is what a temple, the home of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You're not your own. He says, What? For you are bought at a price, so what? Glorify God in your own body. So how do we live these kingdom attitudes out? This is how. These kingdom attitudes can only be lived out in the power of the Holy Spirit. They can only be lived out in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't live out these kingdom attitudes in your flesh. They can only be lived out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you a quick refresher on who the Holy Spirit is, okay? This is not on the outline, but I'm just going to throw it up there on the screen. Just to remind you, you may not even know who the Holy Spirit is, but this is who the Holy Spirit is. You need to understand the Holy Spirit is God, Okay? The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. You need to understand the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. But He's the third person of the Trinity. He's eternal. He is what? He's the Spirit of truth. You can see in the Word, in John 16, 13. He's involved in creation, Genesis 1, 2. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters. 2 Peter 1, 21. He wrote the Bible. You need to understand that. Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Say how? He inspired 
the human authors to write down the words of God. And then my hope is, as John 14, 26 says, He is our teacher. And what we're praying is the Holy Spirit would teach us on these kingdom attitudes and how we need to be filled with the Spirit, how we need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. The only way we can live these out is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you need to understand, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. What is that? Present tense. Which means we live these out every day. And the only way you and I will live these out in Dublin, Lawrence County, or wherever God has us during the week, is only by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the only way you'll live these out daily. The only way you'll be acknowledged, man, I need you, Lord, today, is for you to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit and to live in His power. Now, what are some characteristics of this kingdom attitude? This is the fourth question. What are two characteristics, what I want to give you today, what what would be a character, some characteristics of us living out this attitude? Number one is brokenness. Brokenness. That word means, hey, we're bankrupt. We're no longer owner. God is. When you do become a Christ follower, you, if you decide to follow Christ, you need to understand this is the gospel. I'm signing the dotted line, and I'm saying, all right, I'm going to follow you, Lord, for the rest of my life. Didn't say I was going to live a perfect life, and you weren't either. But we're to follow him and to live for him because why we belong to him. If you thought, hey, I just want to walk an aisle, say a prayer, get some religion, do whatever you want, that's what the Pharisee had. That won't get you in heaven. That will just make you self-righteous. But what's amazing is, I really believe, as Jesus is saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, I think there's some verses that are coming up in these people's minds because they would have been very familiar with the Old Testament. It was passed down by memory. It was passed down with each and every family. I think one verse they may have thought of would have been Isaiah 57 15. It says this, for the high and exalted one who lives forever, whose name is holy, says this. He says what? I live in a high and holy place with the oppressed and lowly of spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly. Who would that be? Those poor in spirit. And to revive the hearts of the oppressed. See, brokenness shows your need of Christ. If you're a Christ follower here today, how did you come to know Christ? You came to him empty-handed and said, Lord, I need you, right? Lord, I realize, man, I can't get there on my own. You realize, man, you're a sinner. I need Jesus. He's the only way, the only truth. And you're like, Lord, here, I'm tired of it. I've messed up my life enough. Huh, I'm ready to follow you. So you come to him empty-handed you got to understand, he's talking about Christ followers here. Yes, you have to be broken to come to know him, but you've got to stay broken. Say, why? Because hm. we're sinners still every day. See, if you're not broken... which means moldable and using, broken of your sinfulness and your need of Jesus, which means you're going to be carnal and lazy, prideful, and you won't be seeking God. You won't make it to hunger and thirst for righteousness if you're not broken. And realize, Lord, I need you today. Lord, I'm sorry I messed up today. Forgive me, Lord. And there's many ways. Lord, I shouldn't have said that to my wife. Lord, I shouldn't have said that to my, my kids. Lord, I shouldn't have said that to my coworker. Lord, I shouldn't have acted like a jerk there. On and on and on and on and on. How are you going to get right there? To be poor in spirit and broken? Hey, Lord, I am wrong there. Forgive me. 
See, the only way, see, you never outgrow being broken. You need to understand, brokenness, you may have never ever seen this, but you've got to understand, brokenness is the foundation. If you don't stay close and cling to Jesus, you will never elevate in walking with Jesus in these kingdom attitudes. You'll never make it to being a peacemaker. You'll never make it to being hunger and thirsting for righteousness. It just won't happen because you're doing it on your own. And I think that's many times the problem, is we don't have a hunger and thirst. We don't want to see God move in our lives anymore. We're no longer broken over sin. We're not even broken over the sin in our nation, much less broken over the sin in our own lives. And see, if you're not broken, you're not going to be poor in spirit. You don't care about nobody else. You're not even much caring about your relationship with Jesus. See, it starts right here. We thought poor in spirit, man. I, you, I don't even know what you thought about poor in spirit before you walked in here. I don't even know what you've been taught. But no brokenness? You will not grow. Because only pride comes in. Got your attention. That's convicting, right? <laughs> Very convicting. <laughs> Very convicting. But then you got to have humility. You have to have humility. And I think they would have thought of verse here. This is a verse I think they may have thought of. Man, this is, this is, a, this is a powerful verse here, Isaiah 66. It says, this is what the Lord says. It says, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Where you, could you possibly build a house for me? And where would my resting place be? It says, my hand has made all these things, so they came into... They all came into being, and this is the Lord's declaration. This is what I want to get out of this verse. Wow, this is. He says, I will look favorably. I, I, I will, the favored person, the blessed person, the, the person that I approve is what? One who is, say it with me, humble and what? Submissive in spirit, and read this next one, and trembles at my Wow. That might have been a verse they were thinking about. Humble. Means, hey, Lord, I acknowledge my total need of you, Lord. Submissive in spirit. What does that mean? Where you align your life <laughs> under his control. I know you sing a song with that phrase in it, Sam, but I can't remember. The, Do you tremble? You know. It's a powerful song, but it's right there in the Word. Do you tremble at the Word of God? Let's just be honest, folks. Sometimes we can just get so busy, wrapped up life, things, stress, COVID, fear, vaccines, you blame, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you get so wrapped up in all that, right? That we just forget that God wants to use us. But we just forget the power of his word. And I, I really do say, folks, we ain't going to experience revival as a church, and we're not going to experience revival as a nation if if more people don't get to this. It just won't happen. Now, I really do think this, folks. If we get this sermon, not mine, but <laughs> Jesus, and we start living more of it out, 
we'll see revival in our own life. And then hopefully it'll spread into our families and spread into our churches. And, oh, gosh, we don't have to go anywhere else. We need it in our nation. We need it in our world. I mean, it's just simple. Look, just open your eyes with anything going on in the world. But a sure mark, if you're a Christ follower, is humility. I'm not saying we're always humble and always perfect. None of us are. But if you're going to live out this kingdom attitude, you have to be, there has to be brokenness, there has to be humility. Let me read to you this verse, Psalm 51, 17. You can write it down and look at it later, but I'll just give you the context very quickly. Uh, it's Psalm 51. David's had his big sin with Bathsheba and on and on. Prophet Nathan comes to him and says, hey, you the man. He confesses, gets right with God. But listen to what he says in Psalm 51, 17. He says, says, Sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit. You will not despise a broken and humble heart. Don't miss that. God will not despise a broken and humbled heart. You want God to to speak and work in your life? You've got to be broken and humble. Those are two characteristics. Number five, fifth question. It's another phrase we've got to ask. When do we experience the kingdom of heaven? Because it says, blessed are what? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs, which means it's per- present tense. Now, you're going to read the Gospels, and you've read the Gospels, and if you paid a little attention, Matthew uses the term kingdom of heaven, and Mark and Luke use the term kingdom of God. Same thing. They're both referring to the same thing. They're referring to the rightful rule and reign of God as absolute sovereign. Now, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones said there's three expressions of the kingdom of heaven. You got Jesus, he referred to his presence many times as the kingdom of God. Jesus referred to the kingdom of God as yet to come. And at times he said, man, it's here now. But he also referred to the kingdom of God as dwelling in the hearts of believers. So here's the truth on the outline. You start to experience eternal life in the kingdom of heaven the minute you get to heaven. The minute you what? Become a Christ follower. You're part of the kingdom. Present tense. You enjoy the rule and reign of God in your life. And you experience right now. You don't have to wait to heaven. You get to experience the kingdom. You're part of the kingdom. Why you have the king living within you. And he wants to use you now. See, a lot of times people think, well, no, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, that's what I want to get them. No, it's right now. God wants us to advance the kingdom Right now. And see, the amazing thing is you can walk in this house or you can be online with us and you're like, hey, I'm not a Christ follower. I don't know about this Christ. I st- I'm still, you know, debating whether Jesus is real or not. But today you're like, hey, man, I really do believe he's real. He's the deal. He's the son of God. You can today walk in here, a sinner, give your life to Christ, whether you're online, in person, and walk out of here part of the kingdom of God and be a kingdom citizen. That's pretty amazing. That's the great news we have. That's the news we're to share. Fanny Crosby wrote a song, More Like Jesus Would I Be. A couple of the verses say this, Let my Savior dwell in me. Fill my soul with peace and love. Make me gentle as a dove. More like Jesus while I go, Pilgrim in the world below. Poor in spirit would I be. Why let my Savior dwell in me. See, when you give your life to Christ, you're now part of the kingdom. He said in Luke 17, 21, he says, the kingdom of God is in your midst. And when the king is in you, (laughs) there's the kingdom of heaven. You're representing the kingdom of heaven here today. 
And wherever you go, you're taking the kingdom with you and to be part of it. So let me ask you a question. Are you living a life approved by God? Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's a favored life. That's a life that God approves of. Or are you living a life that God disapproves of? Why? God resists the proud. The question I ask is, some of you, they may have never ever been broken over your sins. Come to a place where you're like, hey man, I'm ready to follow Christ. Today you can follow Him. But you also... Many in the house are Christ followers. When's the last time you were broken over your sin? Might have been a while. You need to understand this attitude is a result of people who know Christ. These attitudes he's talking about, these beatitudes he's talking to Christ followers. He's saying, we're to live these out. See, Lord doesn't need me, but I desperately need him. And the only way I can live this kingdom attitude, and the only way you can live this kingdom attitude, is to be poor in spirit. And so the question I ask is, are you experiencing the kingdom of heaven? And if you're Christ follower, you're already part of the kingdom. You just need to understand he can... You live in it every day if you'll focus on that. So let me wrap up with this quote by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Great pastor at Westminster Chapel in London who's gone on to be with the Lord. He said this, Here's the life to which we are called. He says, I maintain again that if only every Christ follower in the church today were living the Sermon on the Mount. And we just looked at one beatitude. He said what? The great revival for which we are praying and longing could have already started. Amazing and astounding things would happen. The world would be shocked and men and women would be attracted to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to look at these kingdom attitudes. You know what? They're for everybody that's a Christ follower. It's not a buffet. Lord, I, you know, I don't really want poor in spirit, but, you know, I'll take this one over here. You know, I, I, I wouldn't mind inheriting the earth. And you just may not want to know what meek and humble means. See, God approves and God applauds those who are poor in spirit. Those who admit their spiritual bankruptcy, those who admit their spiritual poverty, God says, hey, you got it. And since you got me, I give you the kingdom. Now take the keys and advance. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we just are amazed at this sermon on the mount how powerful it is and just one <laughs> beatitude it's amazing lord what's there for us lord we're all spiritually bankrupt but if you're here today or in person and you've never received jesus as your lord and savior if you could say brad my spiritual count is is not paid in full today it can be Christ follower, what about you? How's your walk? When's the last time you were broken? And acknowledge your need of Christ and broken over your sins. But if you're here today and you don't know this Jesus, you've never surrendered to him, I invite you to do that right now. Just call on him. Say, Lord, I'm ready to follow you. I turn from everything. I give my life to you. And you may want to pray something like this. It's not about a perfect prayer. It's really about calling on the name of Jesus and following him. 
But you may pray something like this. Even online, you can do this. If you're by yourself, say it out loud. If you're with a group, pray it silently. God will hear you. If you mean it, pray it. If you don't want to follow Jesus, this is not a religious exercise. But if you're ready to follow him, I, I, I plead with you. Call on him. He'll save you. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've blown it. I know that I've broken your laws. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins right now. And I believe he rose again on the third day and he's alive and living. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart right now. Forgive me of all my sins. Become my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. And I will follow you the rest of the days of my life as I live for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed. Nobody looking around. Anybody maybe pray that prayer with you this morning? If you did, just kind of raise your hand. Anybody? Just raise your hand. Anybody? Okay? Let me pray for every Christ follower. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray you would speak to our hearts right now. If there's something that we need to get right, may we do it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to have a time of invitation. The altar is going to be open. Maybe you got burdens. Man, you just want to come and lay them here. Maybe you need to come do business with God. If you, if you need someone to pray for you, we're here to pray for you. So I'm just going to ask you to stand, listen to the Holy Spirit, and do what he tells you. prayed and asked Christ in your heart or maybe you know him but you've never followed baptism or if you're interested in membership or just need someone to pray for you there is a number that number 478-242-7200 if you text saved or baptism or member you'll get membership link to how to do that online if you got prayer requests just text pray we want to pray for you and so there's many ways to get connected here but again we thank y'all um for your faithfulness to come. And we just pray God would speak to you. Maybe in the next few weeks, read through this Sermon on the Mount. It's a powerful text. Or just read through those eight Beatitudes. Those are the attitudes that we're to live by. That's the character that we're to live by. Amen? Amen. Just to remind you on 
Wednesday nights, we do have children's stuff going on. We do have service in here, and we are going through 2 Timothy, uh, looking at fight the good fight. Okay? All right, Brother Sam, uh, let's worship and praise the Lord. Church. Thank you, Brother Brad, for that good word this morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Sunday Church.